Some weeks have passed, we're back in Falmouth. This is part six of going very slowly around the UK in a very small boat. Not that one, but this one. It's literally one of the most amazing places on the planet. All right, he's back for more. How are you feeling, Charlie? I'm feeling good, man. Yeah, excited. Are you excited? I'm a little, I feel a bit nervous. Oh, uh, yeah? yeah? This could be the big sea crossing. Yeah, I think we should go to Scilly. If we're feeling very brave, we're going to go to the Isles of Scilly, which is about 35 miles offshore. Uh, but we're probably going to chicken out and just go round Land's End, which is still going to be scary. That's further than France. Charlie Waller will be joining me again. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> Since the last stint, I've been reading up on um, tides. No, you haven't. That's the sad thing. <laughs> Only I have been doing that. No, it's I have no idea the... about boats. I live on a boat and I've known nothing about them. <laughs> we're at Cockwells, a luxury boat builder just up uh, near Falmouth. And we're going to have a quick look around. So this is our build halls. At the moment in production, we have Dutchy 21, Dutchy 27, and then the Dutchy 35. I'll take you up on, on top and you'll see them go together at the various stages. And is that a, that's a brand new hull? That is a brand new hull, yeah. This is what they look like. Swim platform, ladder, trim tabs. Our boats are known for being semi-displacement, so they're not full planing, they're not flat bottoms. Um, with a pair of V8s, these things do 30 knots. We do two cabin versions or single cabin versions. It's like single level living, the galley down there, and then it's all saloon seating up here. You can't call it a classic yacht, but it's definitely traditional. We've never built the same boat twice, and we only make four a year. None of them have been identical. You can see the family from here to there. That's a finished boat. That one's um, just over a year old, actually. That's a client boat. So what's the kind of starting price on them? Um... You're looking around 200, 205,000 at the moment oh, for one of these. You could actually live in that boat, Larry, if you wanted to. You could. Like yeah, well, I wouldn't say live in it. Uh, I mean, it's got everything you need to live in it. So you've got hot water, you can cook. So this is built basically as a super yacht tender. It's got a fridge and everything. Yeah, fridge. It's got a cooker with a load of stuff in there. You could take this around the UK. This would be yeah. a mech. Is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> as a used boat, I think probably we'd part for this for somewhere in the region of 200, 250,000. Part exchange. Exactly. Part yeah. exchange, good Part exchange. <laughs> and, 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 and the Land Rover with the trailer unit. Oh, you throw that in as well? The whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> This is amazing. This one, the glassware on these boats is hand blown down in St Ives. And it doesn't have to be half million pound boats. It can be uh, however much yours cost. <laughs> Do you think we'll make it to the Isles of Scilly? Without a question. Yeah. yeah. Back? That's different. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll definitely make it there. You just don't want to be running in that wind over tide scenario. It kicks up pretty quickly. I mean, you guys are literally at one with the sea. <laughs> What is it? It's a Phantom 16. Wow. What's that do, Chris? <laughs> Look at that, started first time. The support team, Chris, is just going to have a ride along with these guys. Oh, is he going with them? Yeah. Here's yeah. Chris. I really feel like we're in some 80s film. <laughs> no. It. We're travelling in convoy here in our little flotilla of uh, speedboats. Seven foot depth here as we come up the River Fowl. Well, actually, we're coming up Mylar Creek here and we're coming to the River Fowl. Falmouth here, that's where Liz and I finished up. Just trying to keep up with these speedboats. We're going pretty fast on these guys. Good to be back on the water, Harry. I mean, I remember it being flatter than this. <laughs> it's very bumpy. Oh, it's a beautiful evening. 
Yeah. Up here is uh, Pendennis Castle. Which I once went there when I was a kid. You're a bit quicker than us. A little, little, little quicker. Much flatter idea though. <laughs> I think that's the fastest I've been home. <laughs> you made it there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's good. So Joey, they're basically going to be showing you how it's done, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So i got to do this. Yeah. So you can have a go, Charlie? Yeah, I'll go have a go. As I pick up speed, yeah. the water will be rushing under the board and it'll start to pull you up and out. All right, in he goes. <laughs> uh. Okay. All right, good luck, Charlie. <laughs> All right, mate. Basically, the only thing in the water is the propeller, pretty much. Right? Yeah, it's, it's a very airborne boat. <laughs> <laughs> I love the kind of metallic purple. It's very comfy in there. Yeah, it is a lot. <laughs> so it's two strokes, yeah. It's incredible skills, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. But you were up for a moment, weren't you? It's so hard, and then your feet go yeah. As soon as you get in the air, I just go Whoa. <laughs> How's the ride, Chris? The acceleration looks amazing. It's amazing, it's so pretty. <laughs> Thank you very much, that was great fun. We're just going in to camp for the night in the Helford River, just in here. So this is uh, hopefully a really lovely little quiet camping spot tucked away. We're going up here on the high tide to um, find Tremaine Key. Tomorrow we go round the Lizard. You nearly got up, you pretty much got up for a second. <laughs> Almost, yeah. I could feel it starting to pull up, but then as soon as that happened, it just pulled me off the board. It's Here quite fun go. going like this, <laughs> with the water. Well, look, now we're in the safety of the Health River. Yeah, yeah. On the left here is Frenchman's Creek, made famous in the Daphne du Maurier novel from the 1940s. It's a story about a romance between a pirate and an aristocratic lady. Like yeah. a uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. A bit like Pirates of the Caribbean. So Daphne du Maurier is famous for kind of period romance novels, but she also wrote the story for the birds that eventually became the Hitchcock classic. Just spotted the campsite, Charlie, haven't we? Yeah. What's the problem with it? Well, Harry doesn't like company. Pulling into Tremaine Quay looks like a popular spot. Right, Charlie. Here we are. Here we are. We made it. So, did you get any free stuff from the visit to the boat factory, by any chance? No. Did you get free stuff? What? You didn't get like a free cap or a free jumper? No. Did you? <laughs> no, I went wakeboarding. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you got cold, didn't you? <laughs> I got so cold <laughs> because 
they kept coming around because I think they wanted me to be able to succeed mm. and I failed mm. on every turn. What's for tea? This evening I think we're going to have crisps and cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> this old key is owned by the National Trust and apparently yeah, anyone's allowed to camp here. The only thing is it's tidal so Goodwin is going to be sitting on the mud in the middle of the night but by tomorrow morning it'll be floating again ready to go. Breaking little sticks. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm uh, preparing tonight's supper. What kind of sausages are these? Um, I think they're pig. Pig ones. So you guys, you cycled here. Right. It's, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere here, isn't it? It's kind like, of, you've got to yeah. go a long way around to get to it. Um, yeah, this is a lovely spot. Yeah, it's cool. You are a lifeboat man. I am, yeah. I'm a fan with lifeboat. The Sillies is a long way out for a tiny boat as well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, once you're off Land's End, then it's a big bit of walk to cross. Yeah. Charlie's very keen because we've heard about the turquoise water. It's amazing. Yeah. It's like the Caribbean. Yeah. I mean, I think we're going to have to do it, Charlie, aren't we? Yeah, man. Fine, like, I don't get scared about things, but I think that's probably like a lack of intelligent insight. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Morning, Charlie. Morning, Harry. That was actually quite a nice night's sleep, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, really nice. Got cold, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It did drop. Right, so today, Charlie, round the lizard. How's the boat looking? There she is. Get that windscreen clean. Right, loading up. What do we do here? A bit worried we're going to be missing it, Charlie. I think we should just go. Let's go. Classically, we got up slightly late. We're racing now just to try and get around to the lizard before it gets rough. Halfway down to Lizard Point here, we're absolutely gunning it because uh, we're cutting it a bit fine time-wise to get slack water. But it's already a little bit choppy down here. Uh, we're just passing Coverack Harbour. The good thing is there's lots of sailing boats uh, because everyone's going for the same bit of slack water, I think. But it's not too bad, it's a bit bangy. I mean, we wouldn't want it to be like this all the way to the Isle of Scilly. It might not be that fun. We've made it down to Lizard Point. We're just about to go round down here uh, and we're spot on time. So slack water is starting just now. Slack water is when the tides either come up or gone down and then it's about to turn. So the water stopped moving. Oh, right. and as the water runs over some of the shallower rocks, it then produces these standing waves or races. When it's bad, we would get very wet. But I think we're all right at the moment. This point here, Lizard Point, is the most southerly point in the United Kingdom. From here on, it's north for a long way. Yeah. We're not quite round the bottom yet. Here we are, Lizard Point. The bottom of the world. The most southerly point in the UK. As you go north round there, you've got Land's End, and then Dover and um, everything else up back that way. Kynance Cove. This is one of those beaches which is always on the best beaches in the UK list. Look, it's amazing how busy the beaches are. Yeah. yeah. So to get to the Isles of Scilly, it's 42 miles out to sea that way. So we thought we'd better test out the old spare outboard. This is our emergency drill. Is there a little flop grimer thing? Oh, mate, it sounds like one of those little Suzuki motorbikes. Yeah. I think we're, we are sort of ready to go then. Let's go, go, go! Oh, God. Yay! We're yeah. going more out to sea than we've ever been. And yeah. probably 
than you should in something so small. Oh, now it's getting to swimming temperature, Charlie. No, mate, let's get cracking, because this is just the Cornish beach, we're used to them. Think of the Caribbean mm. seas. Mm, right. Safety check complete. So we've just swapped fuel tanks, so we've got a full tank of fuel, which hopefully will easily get us all the way over. Just did a quick last minute bit of um, phone signal and messaged a few people and said, we're going to the Silly Isles, hopefully we'll get there. If no one hears from us in about five hours, hopefully someone will sound the alarm. We've got the PLB, we've got the spare VHF, we've got this VHF, we've got pork pies. Do you feel scared? No. Charlie doesn't feel scared. Let's go for it. Go for it, mate! Dolphin! They probably oh look! Hey! Wow! Hey. That's amazing! Have you ever seen that? No, never. Oh. That's amazing. That's probably dolphins, not hard but four points this time. The dolphin! It feels like such a treat, doesn't it? Yeah. We're getting on for a quarter of the way there now, out to sea. Um, over there is Land's End and we're kind of peeling south down to um, the Sillies. And I think over there we can see a lighthouse out in the sea called Wolf Rock, which we should be passing in about another hour. It's very exciting to see dolphins. I mean, that's the first time I've ever seen anything yeah, like that. Here. It's like literally watching the blue planet right here in the boat. They're coming up, they're saying hello, the jumping around there in the wake of the boat, it's very exciting. Flipper. It's like watching Flipper, yeah. They were two two lovers, weren't they? Two lovers dancing on our wake. They make for life, don't they, dolphins? Do they? I think so. This is like a nature program. Maybe it's lobsters. We've been travelling out to sea now for an hour and a half and we're halfway. Things have got a little bit rougher, haven't they? Charlie's got the slight damp face to prove it. Tuck biscuits are going down well. But we have made it to Wolf Rock, which is a lighthouse out here on this bit of rock. The operation of lighthouses has changed a lot because most of them have become automated now. They don't need people to man all of the generators and whatever and change bulbs so often. Well, there was a bird that used to keep out here. Lighthouse has the um, helipad now on the roof. So this is the shipping lane here and we're just having to uh, avoid it. Apparently we get fined a lot of money if we go in there. We, we can see a very grey, distant spot, and it's the Isles of Scilly. It's fishing time, so what are you going to be catching, Charlie? <sighs> well, we saw some dolphins earlier, so mm. I thought maybe dolphin soup. I'm terrified about popping the boat. How much do I let it out? I don't know. Six miles to go. Caught anything, Charlie? Well, not as yet. But supper's coming, man. Mm. But it's heavy going, this. I feel <laughs> like it? one of those... <laughs> oh. Just 
just a lone dolphin. Are you a bit of a lone dolphin, Charlie? <laughs> yeah. I guess so. But often I get caught in the tuna nets. <laughs> dolphin sighting number two complete. No, number three, man. Well, third dolphin, but the first no, one was a double. Dolphin. Basically, we've gone from being really excited at seeing a dolphin, and now it's just a bit like seeing a fox in London <laughs> yeah. going for a bin. I've, no, I found that exciting <laughs> as well. The yeah. double dolphin was kind of like, um, was more exciting. There's something a bit more romantic about it. Yeah. We've made it. I mean, we've very nearly made it. We're, uh, we're three miles offshore now. You can see very sandy beaches. I can't quite believe we're here. Yeah. We did it, Charlie. We did it. <laughs> Look at the colour of the water. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, I've just got to film this. Here we go. Oh, we made it. We're just sunbathing on one of the uninhabited islands. This is uh, Samson, a bit like Dartmoor, but bluer water. Woo. You should get, like, stay under. We made it. We made it to the Sillies. Now we've got to get back again. We made it to the Silly Billy Isles. This is a very nice place to be. Turquoise. The waters are turquoise. Right, we're going for a stroll. Do you want to see my David Bellamy impression? Yeah, go on. <laughs> Here we are in the sprawling metropolis of the Amazon rainforests. This is the Isles of Scilly. So this island is called Samson and it's one of the uninhabited islands. Oh my, my Delilah. <laughs> it was inhabited up until the 1850s. A local landowner decided he didn't want anyone to live there because he wanted to build a deer park. He uh, persuaded everybody to leave. Then the deer park failed because the deers did not stay within the fence, but the fence is still here, and actually all of the old buildings are still here. So, did um, the deer just like swim away? Well, obviously the deer stayed on the island, didn't they? Yeah. We're going off to have a look at some of the cottages up here, which are still here. Apparently there's a boathouse and various other buildings. There's no one around. There's a lot of ferns. Can you see Land's End from there? No, but I mean, my eyesight's pretty bad. Yeah. This is really lovely. Tents going up. We're getting good at this now, aren't we? Yeah. I do the filming, you do the <laughs> tent picking up. <laughs> We've got an unusual tent. Yeah. What does it say about us, this tent? It says, we're into the outdoors and camping, but we're still a little bit pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> Night, Charlie. Morning, Charlie. Morning. Was there any music playing? Oh, my friend was hearing Yesterday by Paul McCartney. <laughs> Were you? Yeah. It's strange, because he, he dreamt that song, didn't he? He came up with it in a dream. Let's both get on lifting the back, Charlie. <clears throat> oh, that's it. Oh. 
that had just beached and this has just gone high tide. Just had a 10 minute struggle to try and get the boat back in the water, but it is now floating again, so we're fine. We thought we were gonna be marooned here for another 24 hours. So we've got to keep an eye on it, but soon we're heading off anyway. Right, baked beans and then uh, leave the island, Charlie. No! It's time to go. Let's stay forever. So we're thinking of going to St Ives. From here, we could go straight all the way around Land's End and come in on the north coast of Cornwall. It's another big sea voyage, but before we do it, we're gonna take a proper tour around the Sillies. Islands Tresco, which is one of the bigger inhabited islands, but this is New Grimsby Harbour. All of the names sound like quite big places, but actually when you get there, you realise this is just a very small collection of houses and buildings, but it's very nice. I'm not complaining. What a little tropical paradise. Mm. Looks like a little model village, like a postman pat. That local just told us that um, where we put the boat, we've got about 10 minutes before we're gonna be aground and stuck here for the next 12 hours. So we, <laughs> we really need to um, get in the shop quickly. Um, yeah, black Americano please for Charlie and the cappuccino. Is that what I said? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got your favorite, Charlie. Crisps and bread. Bread, butter and chorizo. Oh, you love your bread and meat. I do, <laughs> bread and meat. We've got about five hours just to scoot round all the islands and have a quick look before We've got to head back out to sea because today's the good weather day. We also need to pick up a lot of fuel. I think we've done about 45 litres so far on this trip. We're just coming around the other side of Tresco here. The sun's coming out. It's really just people on yachts and deserted beaches. Wow, so you've been watching. Famous yes, you'll be in it. You'll be in the next one. This is not my wife. This is called Jack. <laughs> Hello. These guys are going round. These guys are going round Britain. So, I don't remember where your journey actually started. London. Oh, was it? Yeah. So, have you got any tips for us going round and coming in at, at St Ives? I've never been in there yeah. by boat. Right. Because it's on the north coast. It's, it's yeah. a long trip right, around for like the south coast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, good to meet you. Yeah, yeah. good. Yeah. Have a good trip. Have a safe trip. Bye. 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 Cromwell Castle, Charlie. Oliver Cromwell. We've been trying to fly the drone, but annoyingly, the proximity to the um, heliport here means that we can't actually take off. So unfortunately, there's no drone footage here for us, which is a shame. Right, we're a bit worried about it being a bit shallow. We don't want to get stuck in these weeds. Where are we going now, Harry boy? We are going to the petrol station. St Mary's. This is the island with the fuel. Yeah. Is this the right place for um, petrol? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they will really. be there. Um, have you got a radio on board? We have indeed. Yeah. I'm glad I get to use the radio for something. Sibley <laughs> <laughs> Steel, this is Rib Goodwin. Yeah, Rib Goodwin, Sibley, let's go ahead. Hello, yes, um, we were looking to fill up with about um, 45 litres of petrol. That's fine, you're at the berth now, sir? Yes, we are. Two minutes, I'll be with you. I tried to make it sound like I knew what I was doing. That's the way. We've just come from um, Bauma. In that? Oh, yeah, yesterday. No way. Yeah. Can't even believe I can't remember another. Here we go. Can't know you that one. <laughs> What's it like living here? It looks like a nice place to be. It's yeah, it's, yeah, it's nice, especially on days like this. How many people live on 
across the five islands. islands is about 2,200. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Do you know everybody? Most like people. 90% of people, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. That's cool. What's the name of the guy that we met in? On the speedboat. Oh, I can't remember it. He, does he work at Cockwells? Yeah. Oh, George Small though. Yeah, maybe. It might be. He yeah. lived here, yeah, yeah. that's one of my... He's got a speedboat. One yeah. of my good mates. Phantom. Purple, purple yeah, speedboat. Yeah, we just been out on the purple yeah. speedboat. Yeah. The finger, yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the finger. What a name, yeah. what a name. Yeah. Charlie did some wakeboarding behind oh, I it. I tried to do some wakeboarding. <laughs> yeah. I just got dragged like yeah. this. Yeah. 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 I know him. That's amazing. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's like world. the Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> not quite. No, not quite. Back to the boat. On woods. To Land's End. How fast can you go? 25 knots. Wow. Two and a half thousand horsepower. <laughs> We've got 30. <laughs> so we're just going to go for a quick beach stop before heading back out. Those guys at the petrol station uh, recommended Higher Town. But this water is so turquoise, look at it. Charlie, look at this, it's amazing. <laughs> It's like the Caribbean, are we going to hit a rock? No, we're right. So, wait, look, we could go there. Go and sit on that sandbank. Oh, it's three foot here. Should we just paddle our way in from here? <sighs> it's so blue. Well, we could just walk it in, the tide's coming in. We're not going to get stuck here, are we? <laughs> when is low tide? I'm just going to beach it here on the sand. Ooh. What a sandbag! Welcome to paradise. Round Land's End to North Cornwall and St Ives. This is another slightly terrifying trip. So yeah, we've just got to battle a few things on the ship. We're a bit low on water. We're going to ask the sailing boat um, whether we can have a bit of their water. Being 20 miles out to sea in this heat, we might get a bit thirsty. But look at that boat, they should have some water up there, shouldn't they? You can have a full one if you want, we've got plenty of water off tomorrow. So. Oh really? Well that would be great. It's right. so brilliant, you can just park it like this. It's brilliant, yeah. Yeah. Look at that, full bottle. Thank you very much, <laughs> great service. That's good drinking water as well. Oh, that's perfect. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much. Yeah. No problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take care. Well, great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What are you drinking now? Um, pink gin. Pink oh, gin. lovely. <laughs> <laughs> very similar. Oh, Bye, have a good rest of your holiday. Thank you. Right, Charlie, we're ready. Let's roll. Just completely in the middle of nowhere. Water, water everywhere. Oh, land. 
home, mate. It's quite silent, deadly out here. Yeah. Isn't it? You think you could swim from here? I don't think I could. Oh God, no. You're joking. I could not. No. So we're about halfway back between the Sillies over there, which you can just about see on the horizon, and Land's End over there. God, I hope that engine starts. We're 10 miles out and we stop the engine. While we're here, Charlie, let me take you through some of the improvements to Goodwin. These seats and these seat bases are from a 1980s model of this boat. They came with wooden tops, which had completely rotted. And on the last trip, Lizzie was pretty much falling through the floor on this seat. So I realized I needed to replace all, this, all the seat tops. And I also wanted a better place to put the spare outboard. You'll notice we no longer have the two cases. We've now got one. This one houses both the drone and the camera. So if you look under here now, we've now got proper storage for the anchor. This is recycled PVC sheet. So this spare outboard now clamps really nicely on here. All right, Charlie, you're up for some driving. Yes, mate. Although I lost my trousers somewhere en route. So I'm worried about my very pasty pins getting um, rouged. Burnt by the sun. Yeah. Land's End. This is the southwest tip of Cornwall. That's the Longship Lighthouse. Those are the Longship rocks there. That lighthouse was built in uh, 1865. And up there is Land's End, the big tourist attraction. This patch of water is notoriously treacherous. And you get, again, a bit like Portland Bill, you get these big races. Because it's such a calm day, it's not too bad, but um, it's definitely a lot choppier than it was. This is Land's End, dong, 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 my only friend, Land's End. This is Cape Cornwall. I'd never heard of it. This was once thought to be the most westerly point. One of Cornwall's main sort of industries used to be tin mining, and um, the coast is littered with the old remnants of the mining processes. Cape Cornwall used to have a huge tin mine on it. When the mine closed in the 18 something, they um, left the chimney from the mine on top of the headland so that um, it would be an aid for navigation. So up there, there's a 1850s chimney. Oh yeah, probably 1800s chimney. Classic couple of tin mines on the cliff here. Deep into the rocks here, you'd have your mine going down and it would fill up with water. The water would need to be pumped out. These visible bits are the old wheelhouses, which had the steam driven pumps, steam engines that pump water out of the mines. In the 19th century, tin was really important for tin cans. Tin is very unreactive, so it was a good coating for the steel cans. But now, obviously, um, I think they make them out of aluminium or something else. But it's like bloody pole dark, isn't it, really? I've not seen that pole dark. Have you not? All right, onward to St. Ives, Charlie. I knew a man from St. Little... Whoa, 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 whoa! What? Oh, God. Right, we just hit a lobster pot line. But how would you know? Look at that. Jeez. Right, so we've got to see if it's around the propeller. I don't think it is, Charlie. I think it's just caught no, snagged. You take that in. Yeah, and which way are we pulling it? Like, My way. Pull the boat to over the it. front. We're off it. It didn't quite hit the propeller. Right. Well, now I've got going. God, it's stressful. 
So maybe give them a real wide berth in case they're more training lines yeah, yeah. like that. Off we go. Okay, I'd also like to point out one of the other little additional elements we've added to Goodwin. We've added the passenger glove box. This is the co-driver glove box. Oh yeah, in here you can put your phone. We've got the backup VHF radio. There's the Tate Gallery up there. You don't look like Jiminy Cricket with your hat like that. <laughs> what have I got it on, like that? Yeah. <laughs> and look, look at these seals, Charlie. Oh, oh. Hopefully the support team will be arriving very shortly. Yo, what's up you two? <laughs> what are you saying? I'm on YouTube! What's up YouTube? What are you saying? Did it again, I just flipped the pain Stripping and dipping the pace, slap on everything Swimming, you're sick in the way That was an adventure. So onward, I guess. We've made it to St. Ives. We'll be back soon. Uh, it's raining tomorrow, but hopefully soon we'll be back out there to carry on on the North Cornish coast. 